Uh, well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this, the latest in RUSI's adversarial studies series, where we seek to examine how competitors and challengers are approaching competition and warfighting, and how Western nations and allies might respond to them. Uh, today, uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Admiral Li Ximin, who was uh, the Taiwanese Chief of General Staff, to discuss some of the lessons from Ukraine for smaller states. You know, if the current conflict has illustrated anything, it's that a range of asymmetrical capabilities seem increasingly capable of holding large, disproportionately valuable platforms at risk, whether that's ATGMs destroying disproportionately expensive tanks or uh, anti-ship cruise missiles like the Neptune uh, sinking the Moskva. Beyond that, we've seen how a society that is resilient and can mobilize its resilience can inflict disproportionately high costs on a much stronger on paper opponent. So some of the lessons from Ukraine for smaller states are of great note to us in the West. And yet many of these ideas were anticipated in other parts of the world, most notably in Taiwan, where the innovative overall defense concept in many ways anticipated some of the trends that we're now seeing in play in Ukraine, the potential for cheap asymmetrical capabilities to inflict disproportionate costs and, way, and many of the ways in which smaller states can level the playing field. So today I'm uh, delighted to be uh, joined by Admiral Lee for a discussion of what the lessons from Ukraine are for Taiwan, to what extent the ongoing conflict is serving as proof of concept for the ODC, and uh, what new lessons, if anything, uh, Taiwanese planners and perhaps those in other small states might uh, draw from uh, the conflict in Ukraine. Uh, our guest today, as I mentioned, Admiral Lee, was uh, the Taiwanese uh, Chief of General Staff from 2017 to 2019. And in that capacity, he was one of the progenitors of the overall defense concept, which re-envisioned the Taiwanese approach to its defense and, re and retooled it from a symmetrical to a much more asymmetrical approach. He was uh, awarded the Order of the Cloud and Banner with the special Grand Cordon prior to his re uh, retirement by President Xi Wen in recognition of his service to the nation and his role in uh, building its defensive capacity. So first of all, Admiral, thank you very much for joining us today. I do appreciate you making the time, as do all of us at RUSI. Uh, before I turn over to the Admiral for his initial remarks, I would like to remind the audience of uh, two things. Firstly, while the initial remarks of the Admiral are on the record, the question and answer session is strictly off the record. Secondly, I would direct your attention to the Q&A button, which is in the bottom center of your screens. Please feel free to put your questions in at any time you want, uh, including during the opening remarks, and I will collate and list them for the uh, Q&A session when we get there. And uh, with that, uh, Admiral, over to you. Uh, Ad okay. Okay, did you hear me? Uh, did you hear me uh, say, say that? Uh, yes, we can hear you, Admiral. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Sidas, for your kind uh, introduction. And, uh, it's my uh, great pleasure to have this opportunity to uh, speak here and uh, to tell you about the, uh, the, uh, how is the war in Ukraine from Taiwan perspectives, the, it's particularly uh, in my personal view, and the, uh, also the uh, situation for the uh, Taiwan's defensive planning, especially uh, as uh, CDAS just introduced, it's a small country, how to counter with uh, big, powerful countries, threats, and uh, invasion. So uh, today, uh, I, I will uh, spend the kind of uh, 20 to 30 minutes. The, uh, first, I will talk about the uh, Ukraine war from Taiwan's uh, perspective, then the, I will briefly uh, introduce about the strategic environment the, across the Taiwan's trades. And uh, finally, I will introduce about, introduce about the uh, overall defense con concept, ODC, how ODC construct, develops, and implement the, uh, the 
asymmetrical warfare. As such, a small country that is a very uh, important. And, uh, so uh, first, I would like to uh, to say uh, I'm not experts for the uh, analysis of the uh, Ukraine war. But I try to focus the, uh, I believe the uh, most of the experts here in the uh, defense, the community in Taiwan will agree the, uh, that perspective from the Taiwan's point of view. The first uh, we see that the uh, determination and the will to defend your country are very uh, critical. So we can compare the situation in Ukraine now and uh, the Afghanistan the after the U.S. military uh, withdrawal, you know, the, uh, the, the physical capability there. But if you don't will to fight, you, you don't, if you don't will to defend yourself, the, uh, then the, no matter how, how much that's a physical, how strong capability you have, that, that, that's, that's finally will be in vain. And secondly, uh, I would like to say a different situation from uh, Taiwan and uh, Ukraine because uh, Taiwan uh, is an island state. So Taiwan is very difficult to follow the Ukraine mode to achieve the defense objectives in the cross-trade conflict. Because in the Ukraine mode, because there are so many uh, international support during the wartime and the Western world can continue to support, to provide the weapon or whatever that Ukraine needs during the wartime. But the Taiwan is an island state. So the once the war began, then the, uh, probably we have no chance to receive the, any other country's uh, the, uh, support. So that's a very uh, the, uh, the, uh, essential thing that the uh, Taiwan should keep in, in mind. So uh, under the, uh, this case, then the uh, building the credible self-defense capability uh, kind of is the only, uh, only way Taiwan should do, you know. I, uh, also, uh, you can see the, uh, from the Ukraine war, we found out many city in the ruins in the Ukraine war has proved as a small country, uh, there will be no difference between front line and the rear in war. And the uh, expectation that the civilians will not be attacked is unrealistic. So in planning the military operation with the civil support and the resilient society is essential for Taiwan, like uh, territorial defense forces. So only relying on the military only is not enough when defending your country, especially for a small country. So uh, compared to China's, the uh, Taiwan is a relative the few uh, conventional weapon system. That's definitely, that's a definitely not dependable, particularly um, Many uh, Taiwanese believe that the, uh, Taiwan's uh, long range land attack missile are not the game changer for the cross the, the straits conflicts. You, you, can, you, you, you could see that Russia shot over 2,000 long range missiles, but did not affect too much in the battlefield. I will not take more examples about the, the function of the conventional weapon system can do in the uh, battle, battlefield. Uh, but I will discuss a little bit more detail about the in Taiwan's battlefields, the uh, letter about the conventional weapons and the asymmetrical weapons. So uh, in the battlefield, especially for the weaker side, the, uh, also that is very important thing that you can what told us Sustaining the capability of air denial is very uh, important. You see, the, uh, because the, we cannot compete the, uh, the powerful country uh, with the air battle. 
but we still have uh, another ways for the asymmetrical, asymmetrical way to uh, defense or deny the air enemies air superiority. So, uh, but most important things is this you, you can do by yourself is to prevent from damage from the, uh, the prevent the damage from the enemy, the air attack. So in, all, in order to uh, prevent the damage from uh, long distance and air attacks, the, uh, as a small country, the small, numerous, and the mobile, dispersion, precision, and the lethal weapons are critical, especially for weaker sites and uh, small country. And also we can see uh, if this war probably uh, it just cannot finish in the short term. So uh, in, in this case, the, the logistics will become a very, very uh, essential, will be the key. So we can compare the, of the Russia's operations in the initial stages and now the, in the Donbass because the difference difficulty for the uh, logistic supplies, supports, and uh, the, the situation, the comeback situation yeah, can also uh, different. So uh, if the China really uh, launch a kind of full scale invention and uh, successfully uh, landed on Taiwan, then the, the follow on logistics support would be uh, very, very important for mainland. So how to attack the, uh, their logistic supply support would be also the important things for Taiwan to uh, think about it. Also, finally, I would say that Taiwan should watch closely about the force developments and the tactics adjustments made by uh, China's uh, People's Liberation Army, according to the situation in Ukraine war. Because we are watching the Ukraine war, they are watching also. So uh, that is will be a very uh, the, uh, important thing uh, for the future preparation. So in uh, conclusion, you know, Taiwan as a small country just cannot fight with China as a great power in symmetrical ways. So building the innovative asymmetrical capability is the only solution for Taiwan's defense. But the problem is how? So before uh, we decide how to build up this kind of asymmetrical capability, uh, I believe that we need to first look at the current strategic environment across the Taiwan Strait. There's no doubt Taiwan faces an existential threat. Given the extreme imbalance in defense resource across the Taiwan Strait, Taiwan will fail if we continue to use traditional ways to resist the threat from China. For Taiwan, it is no longer a question of whether we need to change or not. If we want to survive and if we want to successfully defend ourselves, we must change. This is a matter of life and death. But before we decide on how to change, we first need to make sure that we are changing in the right direction. We need to look closely in the right challenge we are facing so that we can find out correct solution to solve the problem we have. From my perspective, there are, uh, there are several challenges they are creating the problems of Taiwan's defense. The first is the uh, escalating the gray zone aggression. I believe the, most of you know that the, uh, there are lots of the uh, military aircraft to the, of the uh, China flew over to the, uh, to the airspace near Taiwan. I believe the, uh, the kind of a nearly a thousand the, uh, Air, military aircraft, the, 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 the flying surrounding the uh, Taiwan's the, uh, 
airspace. I believe the, uh, they keep on doing that is because there are several purpose that because uh, China wants to send the, uh, the signal that can intimidate Taiwan and the United States as well as other countries in the regions. And secondly, they do so because that can improve its military aircraft training capabilities. And third, yeah, they can gather the intelligence about Taiwan's response capabilities. And fourth, they can overwhelm Taiwan's air force by forcing it to fly excessive hours in response to their air inclusion. So uh, also the PLA and Navy has been also doing the same gray zone operation as their Air Force has been doing because normally we cannot see that because uh, the public just cannot the, uh, the, the monitor and the lesson from the radio as the uh, engagement between the, uh, the uh, air, air, aircraft the, uh, when, the, when the ship is engaged the, uh, at the, uh, the, 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 the sea area around surrounding the Taiwan. But there's also a lot of the gray zone opera operation from uh, China's their naval ships. So in the future, I believe the, uh, they will increase the coercion by uh, gray zone aggression. Uh, we can uh, predict that the, the, uh, sooner or later, that's kind of a large military exercise near Taiwan's territory water and uh, airspace. This uh, can be happened. That is a very severe coercion that China will give to Taiwan. And secondary, the, 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 the problem the, uh, we face is the invasion of the force in various forms. Because the, for any purpose, if China really wants to warm or coerce Taiwan, they can conduct the uh, joint fire strikes. They can seize stop the any uh, offshore islands from Taiwan. They can also conduct the air and the sea blockade operation. And finally, if necessary, if they want to achieve their China dreams or, or personal ambitions of the Xi Jinping, it will probably uh, launch the full scale of invention. Then it is the existential threat to Taiwan. And third problem we have is the uh, extreme imbalance of defense expenditure across the straits. Taiwan's annual defense expenditure is about the uh, 13 billion of US dollars. And China's annual defense spending is about 290 billion of United States dollars. So it's about 22 times the gap. It's a huge decade. And fourth, the, we have to build up our capability schedule with urgent needs. In March, 2021, the former uh, the, uh, commander of the United States, uh, Indo-Pacific Command the, uh, States the, uh, testified it in the uh, Congress. He said that the 2027, China would have the full capability to launch the full scale invention threat. That means there's only kind of five years from now. We don't have too much time to strengthen our self defense capability. So this is urgent. So we do everything to strengthen our defense capability. We, we need a kind of instant capability. And the, also the problem is the uh, very unique in Taiwan, that is the very highly divided public opinions. Because you know, the China and the Taiwan, that believe that's the real same race also, uh, some younger generation, they, they, they don't think so. But however, we speak the uh, same language, we have a uh, same custom, and we have very, very similar culture. That is creates different sense of the ideology in Taiwan. 
also the national identity. Some people believe that we are Taiwanese, but our former name, the country is still Republic of China. So you are the Chinese or Taiwanese? Yes, sir. Always, uh, always troubling me uh, for the Taiwanese people from generation to generation. It's also the problem. Also, we cannot see what really affects India or defense preparedness. And finally, I believe also that's a very uh, important thing uh, threats here to Taiwan is that Taiwan is lacking of sense of the crisis. And there are several causes because the first a long endurance peace pacifies Taiwan's general public. The people believe the, uh, China wouldn't use the of a force as long as Taiwan does not declare the independence. And the launch of the war against the Taiwan is too costly to wait. And even still, some people believe that the US will come to Taiwan's aid when the time comes. But yeah, when we face so many uh, difficulties, so many uh, predicaments, yeah, when we uh, build up our capability, then we have to take this difficulty into consideration in order to make a balanced capability. However, it is not an easy task to deal with this challenge at the same time. Because the best solution for one problem sometimes takes away resource from the others. So we must develop a balanced approach to meet our unique security requirements. So that's the, uh, when I was, uh, in the office in the 2017 as the chief of general staff, which is the highest ranking office officers, and also the joint operation commander during the war times. I developed the overall defense concept. Now uh, I would like to uh, introduce a little bit about the overall defense the, uh, concept. And I believe that is the best strategy by using the asymmetrical warfare to defense the uh, Taiwan. The focus of the ODC is for Taiwan mainly to be able to first to deter and resist the full scale invasion. And the second, effectively allocate or limited defense resources. Third, the build instant capability to address near-term crisis and force maintain the ability to counter gray zone coercion to maintain the public morale during the peace time. So next I would show you something about the OTC thinking on capability build up and operations. We have to develop capability with deterrence and the defense, because we build up the uh, capability in us for winning the war. We want to prevent war. Uh, we, we don't have too much time and it is not the topic for me to talk about how to prevent war. But however, if we build up defense capability, probably we can really deter war. Oh, sometimes when we uh, talk about the deterrence, we talk about the capabilities, qualities, and the communication. And then we can use the deterrence more to include the deterrence by punishments. The, uh, we, if we possess some kind of uh, nuclear warhead weapons, but it is not the case in Taiwan, so I don't talk about it. And the second, we can conduct the uh, extended de deterrence like the NATO, we use the mutual uh, military treaty to deter the enemy not doing the, any uh, invasion. But however, it is also not still a case in Taiwan. Taiwan has no any uh, military treaty with any uh, foreign country. So uh, 
for the deterrence that Taiwan can use, the, the way is uh, it only is the uh, deterrence that might deny. So in Taiwan defense case, in order to deter China from launching the full scale invasion, Taiwan should establish the military capability. That's to make the China believe that it will suffer heavy rules if it did so. And even if China is willing to suffer heavy rules, there is still no certainty that they will be able to successfully achieve the objectives. However, no one could predict the decision on war in authoritarian states, just like the, uh, Putin's decision in Ukraine war, the surprise war. So when the deterrence failed, we should be able to win a war. But how to win a war? When the military is extremely weak compared with the Chinese military power. So considering this, the, uh, therefore the ODC first design is to redefine the winning the war for Taiwan. Because of a huge gap of military power across the Taiwan streets, we cannot defeat the enemy totally in the battlefield. Therefore, we must be very pragmatic and uh, redefine winning the war for us. And then we can make the best preparation based on that definition. So ODC defined winning the war as fail enemy's mission to occupy Taiwan instead of totally destroying the enemy forces. Under this definition, the ODC specifically established some operational concepts based on the threats from the PLA and the Taiwan's unique environment. So the, uh, under this kind of uh, definition of winning the war, first uh, since uh, as a small country, Taiwan has to abandon the traditional war and adopt a symmetrical warfare. But what is the suitable asymmetrical warfare for Taiwan? I think the first concept we should establish is to adopt the concept of deny instead of concept control. That is very important, the concept, concept of deny instead of concept of control. And uh, I will give you the detail of the EV you are interested in the, during the Q&A session. I just give you an example here. For instance, for the air combat, we don't need nearly 2,000 military aircraft. Now we have. Instead, we should, we should be buying more truck-mounted missile launchers and surface to air missiles. We just need to deny the, air, the enemies the uh, air superiority. Also the example for the sea battle, we don't need to control the Taiwan Straits. We just need to deny PLA from controlling our littoral war so that we can defend ourselves, so we can achieve the domination, so, so called the, uh, the fair enemy to uh, occupy the Taiwan. And uh, tactically, uh, we, all, we need to attack the enemy's the center of gravity, but not just totally uh, trying to uh, destroy the uh, enemies, the operational forces. And also, uh, as a small country, we have to explore the natural advantage, Taiwan Strait, different geographic situation, and the, also to utilize the uh, civilians' resources because we are fighting in all yards, so we should use the, everything we have defend ourselves. Uh, in this case, the, uh, I believe the, the Taiwan should build up the, the credible all-out territorial defense mechanism. So, uh, so many above the mentioned item all relates to uh, a symmetrical concept, but we need to build up the force that can implement the concept 
I mentioned. However, we have so many very different, different defense requirements from countering the aggression, aggression during the peacetime to the full scale invention during the wartime. We know that conventional capabilities are very good for countering the great zone aggression, but asymmetrical capability are good for resisting full scale invention. But how do we make the best balance? It's all seriously a problem. And also the, under the uh, limited defense resource, we have to focus on the existential threat. That means we should invest more weapons, more capabilities on countering the forced invasion, but not for the great zone aggression. So the uh, one of the important tasks for, for ODC is to optimize defense resource allocation, and we should make focus, we should set the priority, so that we can make the best balance of conventional capability and asymmetrical capabilities. So the ODC consideration of the uh, capability build-up, the first we will focus allocation and prioritization of defense resource. Especially uh, we have to define what is the asymmetrical capability, especially for Taiwan, and the focus on the cost effectiveness and the operational uh, performance. And we have to emphasize the immediate capability and we have to remember ammunition kills, sorry, ammunition kills, platform doesn't. So for the first build up of the ODC, we have three tenets. The first is high survivability. The high survivability on the battlefield, that's very important. In my perspective, Building highly survivable capability is a form of active defense. The PLA's long range weapons can be precise and lethal. Therefore, when the PLA launched massive missile and air attack during the initial phase of the war, whether Taiwan's force and the capability can survive and still perform in follow on operation would be critical, critical to Taiwan's defense. For the purpose of force preservation, we should not prioritize any weapon that is either on a fixed size, enormously large and lacking in tactical mobility, no matter how advanced it is. If we want to successfully defend, defend ourselves, the top priority for us is to build resilient operational capability that can survive the enemy's massive air and missile attack so that we can carry out follow on the defensive and the counterattack mission. Survivability is not just about weapons, equipment, and platform. Other capabilities like includes C4SR and target acquisition are equally important. Without ISTAR systems, defensive operation will not be effective. A second is asymmetrical capability. The essence of the asymmetrical capability is to have a large number of small things. They have to be highly survivable and lethal on the battlefield. They might not attract much attention in peacetime, but in wartime, they can be game changers that decide life or death. These weapons can be covered under the natural environments it launch timely stri strike as the invading force. Vulnerable point. Taiwan's asymmetrical system should be lower cost. Numerous, small, mobile, dispersed, precise, and lethal. Even if the enemy knows about their existence, it should be extreme, extremely hard to locate, attack, and uh, destroy them. If the enemy force insists on the course of an invasion, they will pay a terrible price because those large number of small but lethal weapons. In order to counter a full-scale invasion, Taiwan should spend most of the, uh, its defense resource 
on the priority of priority of developing the asymmetrical capability, capability specifically uh, Taiwan's needed. Of course, we also need conventional capability. In everyday people's minds, the large and the sophisticated traditional platforms are symbols of national power. Their high visibility makes them effective in peacetime to counter PLA's great zone aggression and safeguards the uh, Taiwan's air and the maritime space. So we still need the uh, conventional capability to counter the great zone aggression. We need to tell the people they should have the confidence for the armed forces. They can defend the, uh, the, uh, their country because the ordinary people has no idea about this kind of a small asymmetrical weapon systems. And finally, I would like to talk about the concept of oper operation. When you possess a large number of small weapons, you can adopt the concept of mobile, distributed, and the denial instead of concept of concentration, position, and the control tactic. But however, the first the, uh, things the, we have to do uh, for our uh, concept of operation is to conduct the force protection. Then force protection is different from the uh, force preservation, higher visibility uh, vulnerability. The force protection were concentrated on the uh, technical, tactical, and the procedure. That is very important. If the all armed force with uh, small lethal things can use the necessary TTP to protect themselves, then the PLA cannot use the uh, long distance and the air attacks to destroy our, our capability. So that's the, uh, we can use this to do the follow on resistance. And secondary, uh, yeah, we should conduct its decisive battle in the little room. Because uh, only the little room on this space, the Taiwan's military could impose heavy casualty on PLA forces. At the little room, when the PLA forces are close to the shoreline, Taiwan's military, military has the greatest chance to integrate the fire strikes from the air, the sea and the coast and the serious damage incoming forces with a focus on the center of gravity the target, such as a specialized amphibious lift ships and other high value mission critical assets. If we fail in the little room next phase, we should concentrate on the destruction of the enemy at the uh, landing beach. You know, the Taiwan is highly uh, urbanized. There are only a few suitable locations for landing and airborne operations. Taiwan can therefore concentrate fires to attack the main force of the enemy. And the amphibious the landings are very difficult and it complicates the form of uh, operation. When the enemy is taking the uh, beach and the disembarking, there's a very good time for us to attack them. This is where all the asymmetrical capability can be used to attack the enemy's center of gravity. And this can make the enemy fail to land when they are vulnerable. And the last tenet for the concept of operation is defense in depth. If we couldn't stop the enemy from sea and the beach, and we need to conduct the uh, ground operations, but only rely on the regular troop is not enough. So we, Taiwan should also develop the territorial defense forces. And the territorial defense forces should perform a different mission than the regular troops. It should adopt the urban guerrilla warfare with the concept of mobile, distributed, and survivable, and many aim at the enemy's logistic troops. They should equipped with the numerous the small mobile units that can fight independently. They use the decentralized command and they uh, use the uh, integration of the portable weapons and the equipments in the continuously attacking the 
enemies or logistic support capability and establish the uh, territorial defense force of defense in, in depth. That is very important for the last line of defense. Yeah, for the uh, time restraint, I'm running out of time, so I stop here. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, uh, Admiral, thank you very much for that. It was a